So I just want to talk about really quick, lastly, my mom and dog were dying at the same time. I knew my mom had cancer for a very long time, but it was not abnormal for my mom to get very, very sick. My dog was also dying, not eating his food, drinking a lot of water, not really wanting to go for walks, and that was normal behavior. The thing that trips me out is my dog died one week and my mom died the next, but the shit they were doing, even though they were very sick, was not abnormal behavior. Like my mom would often sleep a lot. She would also have memory issues. She would not want to eat. She like all the shit she was telling me on the phone and like going through body aches and shit. That was normal shit she did like when she was really sick and then she'd get over. Not saying that I should have expected that, but I expected her to get over that hump. My dog like he had like anxiety and he was also a very moody dog. And the shit that he was doing when he got sick was also very normal. So I wasn't expecting either one of them to die because it wasn't abnormal behavior. And I think that's what shocked me the most, honestly, because like I was not expecting them to die. Like I can't describe it. In the back of my head, I always thought my dog would die, like obviously. And especially because my sobriety hung so closely to him being alive, it was always a fear of it, fear of mine. And he was my best friend. Like, I cooked for him. I loved giving him baths. I loved taking care of him. I think because my childhood was so, so sometimes that being able to be the protector and provider of something that solely depended on me made me happy because it almost was like I got to... F I got to... I don't want to say fix what happened to me because there was no fixing that honestly but I got to be what I wanted nobody got to fuck with this dog he ate every single day even if I didn't eat and I did whatever it took to take care of him like I really like loved my dog deeply like it was it was therapeutic it was therapeutic. That was the, that's another fucking thing that even my psych, I had two different psychiatrists that I really, really liked specifically. Both of them felt like me having the dog because I got sober the very first time I got, like literally the first night I got the dog, I was sober. It was like all my trauma, I got to redo because now I have him. And I don't know so like I said it was just like I wasn't expecting him to die because if he was on separation anxiety medicine so the night on that Sunday that I came home and my power was out because I forgot to pay the light bill because I moved into a new apartment he got a little sick my mom is on the phone telling me how sick she is and that I need to come home but I just moved into this apartment just for them like my mom every single every single day for years was like move into your own apartment move into your own apartment move into your own apartment let's go let's go let's go so I've been fucking killing myself for years even though I caught COVID three times and every time I catch COVID I'm down for months I did everything for my mom and dog to get this apartment and they both fucking like he dies two weeks after being in there because unbeknownst to me he had fucking pancreas cancer and then my fucking mom never gets to see this fucking apartment and if I will I will show you if I feel like even adding it because it like literally fucking haunts me the only two pictures I put up in my apartment the very first fucking day I move into this apartment I have a framed photo of my mom Actually, I can probably show you guys. I have a framed photo of my mom and my dog that I send my mom and little sister in a group chat. And it just fucking kills me because like, they're literally the reason I have this apartment because I wanted to give him more space and I wanted my mom to, where is it? I wanted my mom, oh, she's been dead for a month. That's why I can't find the group chat in fucking embarrassing i'm literally doing a video about that and i was like why can't i find the group chat and it's because my mom has been gone for a month so that's probably the reason i can't find the group chat but anyway um that was really fucking crazy and that's another thing i'm kind of sick of i will forget my dog is dead i don't have a huge apartment i will forget my dog is dead and i will go look for this fucking dog i will wake up and i'm like oh fuck i gotta take the dog out and i'm like what dog bitch and then when i slept over my mom's house for two weeks um i would open my mom's door and i'm like do you need anything she's dead like i'm only in ohio right now because she well that's that's not even true 
I was supposed to come visit my mom May 3rd and spend two weeks with her. She dies May 2nd. Um, she died around 7 in the morning. My plane was supposed to land on the 3rd around 5 a.m. So, and the thing that I always did when I got to Ohio, I would take my clothes off, sh like getting clean clothes so I didn't get in a cancer patient's bed dirty as fuck from the airport, and I would go to sleep with my mom. If she had fucking, if I had gotten in that bed, like my plane lands at 5, it only takes me like 30 to 40 minutes to get to a fucking house, she, I would have, and I, when I get to my mom's house, I'm so exhausted, and I can't sleep, and, um, I have a problem with sleeping pills from time to time, but I know, like, not to overdo it, I would have taken the Benadryl or one of her poker sets, and I would have been passed the fuck out, she would have fucking died, some, my brother or sister, they would have come in to see me, and she would have been dead, and I am so unconscious when I take sleeping pills, they would have had to move me out of the fucking room while they do all that, so I don't know if it was good that I didn't get to see her before I go, or if it was bad, and I also learned that my mom looked very, very different when she died. She looked very, very skinny and very Skeletor-like. And in my brain, with the last time I saw her, and I haven't seen any pictures since I seen her last, um, she does not look like that to me. So I would have come in, seen how fucking crazy she looked, then she would have fucking died. So I really, like, I don't fucking know. But... Uh, what's this? Oh, pictures of my dog. Um, oh, these are pictures I sent my mom and sister in the group chat. There's me and my mom. There's the dog. It's top of my fridge. Here's books that I was reading. And there's my two stuffed animals. Those are the only pictures I had in the fucking apartment. Like, Here's the, I sent this to my mom. I was like, oh, I just did the top of my fridge. And then I literally put together this whole section for Romeo. With his treats and... With his treats and his whole little situation. So, that's that. So that's that. That's, that's what I'm trying to... That's why the YouTube videos haven't been coming. Like, people have been emailing me. They're like, where's the YouTube videos? Have you fucking seen the last three to four fucking YouTube zero videos? Are you fucking insane? Like, for you, like, I don't mean this in a bad way. And I'm glad that I have people that actually give a fuck whether I post or not. Like, I'm not, like, but I'm, like, have you not fucking watched the last fuck? Like, I've had so many emails and so many people messaging me like, I'm unsubscribing because you won't post anymore. You're inconsistent. My fucking dog died my fucking mom died then it was my fucking birthday like are you insane like i move into a new apartment my dog dies my mom dies it's my birthday mother's day happened and now i'm back in the apartment this isn't my apartment i'm at my old apartment like with my old roommate so i can use their internet because i have no money to turn my internet on because i have yeah i paid to like over three grand to get in the apartment then i paid to furnish the apartment then I paid for shit for my dog. Then I had to pay a lot of money while I was in Ohio. Um, it's just been... I had to pay for the cremation of my dog. It, it's just... It's just one thing after the goddamn other. I spent... The week he was sick, I only took lifts back and forth to work. And I didn't ride the bus because I was terrified that he was so... And that's what I'm saying. It wasn't... I knew something was weird going on with him, but when I called the vets, especially his primary vet, they were like, well, M Romeo has um, separation anxiety, and he would get like that. I would take him to the vet because he wasn't eating, he was drinking a lot of water, he wasn't, he didn't go outside. They would do full scans on him. Nigga was fine. The nigga was fine. He just gets so attached to me, and that, that's what made me cry. That's what killed me because I thought he was sick because I wasn't spending enough time with him because I moved him into a new apartment and then I left him to go to work and I thought maybe he was just flabbergasted like why did you just move me into this new place and now you're not here with me so I literally thought he was just so because it did it because that's happened before before it's happened before when i moved into my place in florida it's happened before it happened in ohio like 
it happens like he will shut down on me and get frustrated or something he was doing and i would take him to vets and spend all this money or call vets and everything they're like that nigga is fine he dogs or children that's like a fucking two-year-old he's just throwing a temper tantrum i go and pay all of these hundreds of thousands of dollars and they're like the nigga's fine like he literally nothing is wrong with this nigga like he's fine and then um so I thought he was just like pissed and then like I said the Sunday that I got home if you watch my what the fuck video I think it was he was so fucking weird like I was like oh my god I just moved him into this new house and I forgot to turn the lights on in my name so after a few days of living there like a week or so like they turned the shit off my fault not theirs my fault and so I was like oh god I was like fuck 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 so I was like, oh, just moved him into this new place. Then all the lights got probably got toned off around like fucking three o'clock or something. I went to work. I said, so he's been sitting in the, but it was like summertime, not summertime, but it's April. So I was like, daylight say So he probably has only been in the dark for like four, four or five hours. Like what the fuck? And I was like, oh, he's moody. So I was babying him and babying him and buying him rotisserie chicken and cooking him chicken he always gets cooked chicken if you watch the videos but i was like really baby i'm like i'm so sorry they said the motherfucker had cancel oh my god i'm calling all these vets i'm like blah blah blah, and they were like does he have a history of doing this i was like yes they're like then that's what he's doing that's what he's doing i was like but he's not eating and they're like but he doesn't eat when this happens whenever he gets to a new territory and then you disappear go to work but you know whenever these things happen and your dog even if you have a steady routine and a steady location he gets moody and you've come in and run tests and nothing's wrong so he's probably just doing that come to find out he's battling cancer and it's pancreas so it's happening very very quick and aggressively and then i can't even like and so parts of my brain was like is he okay is he sick like is this the boy who cried wolf situation like i was so fucking confused my mom's on my phone my mom's never told me to really come home she's never never she lived vicariously through my adventures of traveling different cities and states because she said she had too many kids way too early in life and never got to do that shit so she loved me going out and doing it and i always came home to visit my mom every two months every three months every six months i'm texting her i'm sending her pictures i we talk all like i i really like engaged with her i didn't just up and dip and not respond um and i come home every year for my birthday for her i was coming home this year for my birthday for her so it's fucking crazy uh romeo's on the floor he's sick or maybe faking or he's just going through a moody thing i didn't know what the fuck was really going on him i'm on the phone with my mom she's crying i'm crying and when i cried on the phone with my mom it freaked her the fuck out she's like you don't cry you don't get upset um my older brother he's a cry baby my older sister she cries a lot my younger sister cries a lot my little brother cries a lot all of my mom's kids crying all the time get very emotional it's not a default or a defect or anything it's just they're very emotional and all while i was growing up my mom and my stepdad who basically raised me they prided me in being so strong and never crying about anything and i might not have been crying on the inside but i didn't have a sleeping pill addiction because i was just so fucking successfully happy all the fucking time like i i was like the golden child a little bit i did really well in school i was extremely athletic i had a lot of friends i was very pretty i wasn't like i went to a rich white school and i'm a biracial fag so it's like i wasn't popular to their standards i had so many fucking friends like i was like the golden boy but i was battling like my parents constantly complimented me on my looks on being athletic on never crying on never chasing boys that was the biggest thing my parents were like your sister's always getting caught at boys houses they're always one nigga after the next da, 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 da. you don't do that i'm gay and i told them that at 14 i am fucking gay like i don't chase boys because what the fuck for like but it was so i'm on the phone with my mom and she's like freaking out because i'm crying i'm breaking down i'm like i don't want you to die i don't know what's wrong with the dog i'm in this apartment alone you guys are like my rocks and both of you are fucked up like i i literally broke the fuck down which makes her break the fake down she was like no oh my god you're crying you're crying i don't want to die i can't leave you and i'm like literally it was fucking mayhem and while i'm crying and breaking down my dog 
who's dying of cancer. My mom's dying of cancer. He comes over and he's like hugging me and licking me and jumping on me. And I'm like, and what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, and it was, it was a lot. It, my mattress is still on the floor as we speak because I was about to buy a box spring. And then I noticed my dog was like puking everywhere and like, he can barely walk and I was like, I, he likes sleeping in my bed. I can't get a box spring. He, he, I don't know what, he can't even fucking walk. He won't be able to get on the bed. My mattress is still on the floor to this day because right after I was going to get a box spring, my mom died. So then I had to go to Ohio for two weeks. I was like, what the fuck is the point? Now I'm back, but I'm so like, I'm so confused. And if one more ignorant ass fucking religious posted, this is God's plan for you. Are you fucking insane? I'm so sick of religious people being like, oh, the devil's after you, the devil's after- No, the devil's not after me. My mom had cancel because she was a chain smoker who relentlessly wouldn't lay up off a of sugar. And if you know anything, those two things don't fucking mesh. And she dated two alcoholics who always wanted her to drink with them. That's probably why, that is why my mom had cancer and that's why it never let up. She didn't change her fucking habits. The devil wasn't after any fucking body. What the fuck? Like religious people have to have like a reason. They have to have a reason. They have to blame something. They don't get a job. Oh, the devil was, the devil was right there. Da, da, da. I didn't get the job. God has bigger things for me. You didn't get the job because they did not want you. You were overqualified and they didn't want to pay you more money or you were underqualified and they didn't think you'd be a good fit for the position. It had nothing to do with the good and the bad like take some fucking accountability you didn't get the job because you showed up looking insane talking about dumb shit or you didn't get the job because you're so overqualified they don't want to pay for you i've been told both i've been told oh you know what we were looking for a different set of skills you don't have them or you are so overqualified we don't have the budget to pay what you would probably demand to woke you that had nothing to do with God and the devil, like fucking grow up. I'm so sick of people hearing about my situation. Or they hear like, they see on Facebook like, oh, your mom died on the second, your birthday was on the fifth. Oh, that the devil, it has nothing to fucking do with that. Or they'll be like, it was God plan to make you shongle. I don't need to be fucking shongle. I was homeless four years off and on throughout high school and I've been raped twice by both genders. Like, I don't need to be shongle. There was, I, that shit is so fucking stupid. I don't need to be stronger. Nothing's after me. Like, it's like, grow the fuck up and just take accountability that life fucking blows sometimes. It just fucking blows. Like, my dog died, my mom died, and it was my birthday. I don't think the devil is trying to get me. Like, I don't think God is, like, trying to punish or teach me a lesson or, you know, trying to make me his strongest soldier. Because he wouldn't choose me. My anxiety is fucking crippling. Like, I mean, if I didn't have two younger siblings that needed me and my best friend that we de are devoted to each other, listen, listen, I would give y'all 10 more years of content and trying to be there for everybody and then listen, 40 wouldn't happen to me. Like, I'm telling you, I wouldn't be a part of the 27 club, but 40 damn sure, like, I don't think I'd see it. And like, uh... I'm not the strongest, like, so it just doesn't make any sense, and it really is just fucking baffling, like, it is just fucking baffling, like, something will, something great happens, oh, God did it, if I graduate from college, no, the fuck he didn't, no, the fuck she didn't, I'm the one fucking doing this, like, the fuck, and then when something bad happens, oh, the devil was after me, no, you're a piece of shit, and karma caught the fuck up with you, it's like, and don't get me wrong, I'm, I don't believe in one thing or the other. I'm very spiritual. I believe if you work hard and you do certain shit, you will gain certain shit. And then if you do bad shit, bad shit will happen to you. And then I also believe we are people relying on other people and there's only so much in the world you can control good or bad. And I feel like I could not control my mom's habits. Thus, she died of at finding out she had cancer very early. It was very preventable, her death. And I cannot force one adult to take it seriously. My dog dying? Um, I told y'all he was seven. Come to find out, my man's was like 10 or 11. So, he's an old dog. And, black, and pancreas cancer is common in dogs and common in old dogs. 
So it just was shitty timing. My mom had been battling cancer for years. My dog was old. Like his birthday's in March. He just had another birthday. So my man's was 10 or 11. Um, it's just bad shitty timing that all of it happened right next to my birthday. I don't, it, it's like y'all want something to blame besides shit just happens sometimes. Or like y'all will be the shittiest employee showing up late, barely doing your job job talking about all the gossip doing the dumbest shit and then have the audacity to blame the devil when you get fired you should have got fired months ago and then people will be like oh man this happened oh the devil doesn't let it's you or shit just happens it's one of two things either you self cause these terrible things or shit just happens you know why i'm failing school right now because i got depressed over my dog dying i got depressed the devil isn't doing any of this i didn't do my homework yeah i was sad yeah i was depressed but my school gave me the option of dropping out or trying to tough it out and i went the tough it out method and i didn't do shit shit I didn't do shit even the days were like when my mom after my mom had died and my dog had died I was feeling good I was at the park I was eating ice cream I was like you know walking out I was okay I could have done my homework those days I could be doing it right now instead of making this fucking video I kind of am but I was fucking goofing a little bit I was like I eh, know your mom died don't do homework you know live it up a little bit like you're trying to get over some shit that's me that's not the devil that's me being a lazy procrastinating cunt like take some fucking responsibility and then the same people that want to blame oh well god does this god do where was god during slavery where, where was god when those kids were locked in cages where was god when thousands of women and men get raped and assaulted and falsely accused and spend all their years in jail and get let out when they're in their fucking 70s when new evidence comes to play like where is he then and it can't like it's just stop trying to blame and glorify certain shit and just understand that we are humans that rely on other humans and shit happens because you caused it or shit happens because shit happens like oh fuck like like i'm taking so much accountability i was not there for romeo 100 percent because i was there for my mom like it was like i gave romeo 50 and my mom 50 I'm on the floor laying with Romeo, petting his ears, like, what's wrong, baby? Are you faking? Like, I'm calling people. I'm like, hey, I got to get the dog in now. I'll pay the, like, if you can knock, like, not knock. Like, if somebody's just coming in for a routine visit for their dog, I'll give them $100. Like, I'll give them $200. Let me take their appointment. I was like, tell them I'll give it to them in cash. Like, what the fuck is good? Like, I said, I don't know. Something's up. I'm calling people, researching shit. And because he had the boy that cried wolf thing, it was hard to figure it out. But I would have probably realized he was sick, sick if I wasn't dealing with my mom. So it's not like... I would have, if I, if one had, if they hadn't been dying at the exact same, because my mom was dying, like, barely could speak, was mumbling, like, wasn't eating, she was incohesive, I would have picked up on that if I had given my mom a hundred, couldn't give my mom a hundred because my dog was dying on the floor, couldn't really give either one of them, barely, to be honest, 50, at this point, I'm failing school, at this point, I'm in a brand new apartment, at this point, I'm trying to work a lot so I can fly my mom out to California, so I can give my mom money for it if she wants to go try more holistic type of kale if she wants to go to hospice if she wants me to buy her bouquets of flowers because they make her feel better trying to work hard to give the dog more money and pay for this new apartment that's not really furnished at all i nothing got my 100 percent. nothing got my 50 percent. i and then like i said my anxiety is fucking insanely crippling sometimes and another reason i told my mom i couldn't be on her paperwork when she passes away when my anxiety is so bad, I check the fuck out sometimes. I don't eat, I don't sleep, I don't drink water, I don't shower, I don't brush my teeth. Um, I'm not an asshole. I am actually the most compassionate when I check the fuck out. Because I, I don't know. I'm just like, yeah, I just go with the flow. Like, that's when I'm at my most convincible, honestly. When I'm, I think it's at my most vulnerable. I think that's when I'm at my most vulnerable, when I've completely, that's when my partners have taken the most advantage of me 
And also when some of my partners, that's how I know when I should stop dating somebody. When my anxiety, when I'm off meds, when I have no psychiatrist, when my anxiety is at its crippling, when I cannot function anymore like i'm not eating i'm 90 something pounds i'm not showering i'm not sleeping i'm up day after day i'll fall asleep i have been up for so long that i can take a two hour nap and my body's so unused to sleep that that two hour nap will give me a boost to wake the fuck up for example i stayed up all day all night all day i was doing laundry and the laundry had like 11 minutes left on the clock. I fell asleep because I had been up all day, all night, all day. And it was getting an evening time around like, I got a folk around 5. So it might have been like around 6 or 7 p.m. Because I got home, cooked a little, did the laundry right away. I had 11 minutes left on the time. Well, I passed out. I slept for 11 minutes after being up for three days. I stayed up the entire night. My body is so exhausted that it's almost like the any amount of sleep is enough to keep me up i went to sleep for 11 minutes the timer went off it woke me up i went and got the laundry i stayed up the rest of the night i stayed up the rest of the day and the next night i took a whole bunch of edibles and i finally went to sleep for about 10 or 11 hours i had my alarm clock set at eight and for eight hours of sleep and I woke up like way after that, like hours after that. I might even slept for 12 hours. So yeah, I think when I'm at my most crippling is when I really discover who I should be in a relationship with. I've been down and out and my partners have really, really dug their claws in me. Like they really caught a nigga lacking and let said, let's see how far we can go with this. I've had partners and I don't want them to baby me or pacify me because my issues are not their issues. As a partner, I give you 50, sometimes I give you 80, sometimes I give you 20, vice versa. Sometimes you give me 50, 50, sometimes you give me 80, sometimes you give me 20, I make up for the 80. It's a push and pull. It's a partnership. I can't always be there for you 100 and you can't always be there for me even 50%. It's a tug and pull. Sometimes when I'm crippling, my partners make up for it by, hey, let me cook for you. I'm not going to not eat if someone cooks for me. And one of my partners caught on to that and I will be forever grateful because I, we off and on cooked, but when I hadn't eaten in about three days, they know this like, if I just start cooking, she's not gonna not eat it because that's rude. And like I said, I'm at my most, com they actually told me I'm at my extremely most compassionate it's just vulnerable. You could get me to do almost anything in those states of mind, unfortunately. So they were like, let me cook for you. Let me do this. Hey, you want to take a shower together? Not sex or anything. I just want to shower with you. That's how they got me in the shower. <laughs> I won't get in because I don't want this to be a sob story video for Taylor. I won't get into what some of my partners have done that were very negatively aggressive and violent not necessarily physical abuse but violent when i was at a crippling stance and they were able to put together and they've even told me that they were able to tell i'm saying they because it's multiple people in both circumstances good and bad that they were able to tell that i was like pretty much gonna go along with the flow like because when i check out i'm pretty much like a puppet like i mean if you want to go left and I see the left is jumping off a fucking cliff, I mean, I haven't eaten in three days of slept, so that sounds like a good fucking plan to me. So it was just very interesting to see how people's perspectives on seeing a vulnerable person, what they would do with that if they had the opportunity. It's like, you know, it's very interesting to see um, who's the fairy godmother from Cinderella and who's P. Diddy. Like, it was just very fucking interesting to see who would like I don't know and another thing that is hard right now now that I'm 26 is I feel like I lost my mom and my dog and a lot of money emotions a lot of my life and world was pushed into them all the time 24 7 like mom needs this romeo needs this gotta talk to mom gotta do this for romeo every single one of my days off talk to mom for two to three hours take romeo to the park so much of my life was devoted to them i got romeo when i was 19 obviously my mom's my mom and so much of my 
everything was mom, Romeo, mom, Romeo, mom, Romeo. That I think almost like in a weird way, not religious shit, not religious shit. Just looking at it from a spiritual, trying to be um, optimistic in a way. When my mom and dog died, right after I moved into a brand new apartment, right after I turned 20, I mean, right before I turned 26, maybe the rest of my 20s, I'm supposed to figure out, because when I overdosed twice, I was like, I can't keep doing this to my mom when I did it on the sleeping pills. And then I got Romeo. I'm like, great, I can do this for Romeo. Every time I graduate with a new degree or graduate from with a new certification or whatever, I'm like, here, mom, you can have it. Here, mom, this for you. Here, mom, I don't do the school shit really for me. I mean, I do it to see if I can do it, but then I want to be like, okay, here, mom, here, mom. Every time I get like trophies or every time I accomplish something, I take a picture of it or I hand it physically to my mom. I'm like, here, mom, here, mom. Every time I did better in my life, I was like, I'm doing this for Romeo, I'm doing this for Romeo. And when they both died, I had to, like, look in the mirror real quick and be like, really, like, really, Taylor, like, for the last, like, five, six, ten years, who the fuck have you been doing all this for? Like, because every time I do something, I'm like, oh, this would be great for Romeo. Or, like, every time I get a promotion, I call my mom, I'm like, hey, I got the promotion, she's geeked up, and then, uh... I'm like, oh, good, I got more money for Romeo. But I'm like, do you give a fuck? Like, do you personally, like, do you want, the, like, this apartment? If Romeo and my mom had died three months ago, I wouldn't have gotten a new apartment. I would have paid my roommates the portion to store my stuff, and I would have traveled around Europe. My school's online. My college is online. I would have busted through my classes and made sure I had all A's, and I would have, you know, did the weekly stuff that you have to do but I would have busted through all my schooling and I would have like played in Europe. I would, I'm a very hard worker. I can woke up to 16 hour shifts a fucking day and I have a sleeping issue. Either when I, I can sleep endlessly or I'm up for days. And typically I'm up for days. That's why I had the sleeping pill addiction problem. Um, I can woke for like 16 hours. I'm not complaining. I love hustling. I love money. Um, I do OnlyFans from time to time. I would have hustled and I would have took my ass to Europe, came back, hustled, took my ass to Europe. Um, uh, yeah, if they had died months ago, I would have never signed an apartment lease. No, I would have stayed with my roommates, paid to keep my shit there, and I would have traveled endlessly. I want to see the world. I want to experience different cultures. You guys know I'm studying the Swedish culture. I've passed a lot of my Swedish exams. I'm dwelling into the culture. I'm surrounding myself around Swedish people. There was a chance I would have tried to go study there abroad for like a year if my if my dog and mom had died like months ago so it's just very interesting because now i'm thinking like so what did you do most of your life for was it for you or was it so your mom was happy and like loved you and like was proud of you and then a lot of it was so you could give your dog a better life and now you did so much for them what are a lot of the paths you've taken what are a lot of the things like what are you going to do now that you have to do shit for you and not for two people that are dead now that's that's the thing of it that's the thing of it sorry i'm so fidgety like i can't find my anxiety toy but um so that's pretty much the thing of it all is i feel like okay your early 20s is like you know not 20 but like 18 to 25 you did so much for other people your exes your mom your dog mainly the mom and dog which is funny that they died at the same time because they were my life and so it was really funny it's really funny now that they died now that I'm 26, because now I'm going into my 30s with a brand new apartment with, a, a, like, a really good job. And I'm, like, with school. And it's, like, who are you going to do the shit for now? Now you have to be sober for yourself. At first, you were sober so your mom didn't have to keep coming to the hospital. Uh, you were sober when you got the dog so you wouldn't, like, abandon him. Who are you going to be sober for? Who are you going to graduate and get your doctorate now for? Who are you going to get the clean this apartment and do this apartment? What now that you're going to be pushing 30, what is your life for? Because it never seems to be enough for you to do it for you. You always did it for them and they are dead. So like what the fuck is going on now? So that's that. That's that. I think now I have to figure out what I'm doing for me. I'm 26 now. I still don't know if I want to date. I don't think it's healthy. That I see so many of my friends. They fuck this guy after the next guy after the next guy. They, when they're not dating this girl, they're dating that guy. They leave 
they will stop living with one person to move in with another person to have one person move into their house it's like a recycling door of relationships and it's not fair to yourself or that people or the other people no matter what you guys are looking for it's never fair to yourself so i think i'm gonna stay single for a little bit longer because i obviously just had all this trauma and it probably would be insane to try to date now but i think i need to figure out like what I really want to do. I know I really want to do social work, but I always figured when I get my doctorate, I'll just go hand it to my mom, is what I always thought. Um, I always figured, like, if I do live in a big house, my dog will have the yard. It's never for me. Like, I I want the shit, but I'm so indifferent to how some shit plays out. So I have to I have to figure some things out. And I think life's a journey, and this is shit you gotta figure out. But I do gotta do my schoolwork. I just wanted to catch you guys up. You can feel free to keep unsubscribing because I haven't been posting. It's a personal choice. Anyway, I love you guys. I really love you guys. The ones that are fucking emailing me and checking on me and being supportive, I appreciate that. The people saying like, I'm unsubscribing, you won't post anything. But read the, look at the fucking content. Like just don't even watch the videos. Read the fucking titles. Like, come on, man. Give a nigga a break. But I love you guys. I do love you guys. The real ones, obviously. Not the fucking people getting frustrated with me. But I do have to get back to this homework while I'm sitting here. I'm failing all my classes. Where's the fucking time? I have time. That's why I can't blame anybody but myself. Because right now, I'm not... I'm devastated that my dog and mom died, but I can do my homework right now. I gotta stop fucking playing. But thank you guys so much. Let's go. Okay. Alright, guys. Um... Yeah, always feel free to reach out to me on Instagram. Um, I haven't been checking my emails. Remember when um, on Jesus and Mero, you think I'm checking emails at this time in my life? What was his name? Huh, John? You think I'm checking emails at this point in my life? I can't remember who that was and why he was so hot. But it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. Um, I don't even know why I was just doing that impression. I keep saying I need to do homework and I keep doing everything, but but this is what my Instagram looks like. It's just Taylor Shy or whatever. Feel free to message me. If you message me crazy shit, I do block you. Don't send me dick pics. Okay. I love you guys for real though. I gotta go. Mwah. Bye babes. I promise by the way I'm gonna post fun content. I have been painting very large canvases for weeks, but every time something crazy happens, I have to like stop painting. But I do have more painting videos coming. I'm gonna be doing body paintings, uh, more clown stuff. Um, I have like an outfit I want to try out. Um, it's gonna be fun. I have like I'm going to Gay Pride th this Sunday. I'm really excited, and so I have more fun con content coming. It's just a nigga needs to breathe a little bit, like woo, but. More fun content's coming. It won't just be about how everybody died. <laughs> um, more fun content is coming. I have no birthday content for obvious reasons. I don't really remember what I even did for my birthday. Went to dinner with my family. It was very fun. I haven't seen some of them in a while. But then I remembered why we were all together. And I was like, ah. So, that's that. Okay, bye babes. I love you guys. Mwah. Bye.